Invented Miata and kept the yep. BMW. I remember, yeah. Damn. So I wouldn't have been bougie. I wouldn't have been bougie, Adrian. My car 22 years old. Listen, I had, I'm telling you, I was working these cars. Um, and get, it, get that car, I mean, Goody, get that car. I had, I had four of them when I was in San Antonio. One was a drop top, then a Dodge Intrepid. Then I had the, uh, a, a Toyota pickup, a Dodge or something pickup, which I tore up every time I tried to back that thing in something. I was knocking down fire hydrants. Um, and then I had a Sebring. Uh, so it was, you know, all of this is by default because the first car they gave Margot was too small. They gave her a pickup truck and Margot came driving with <laughs> oh my goodness. Wheel, here's her knees in between her steering wheel. You know what I mean? So they didn't want to let us take the car back because it was under contract. So I ended up having that one by default when she went back to when she went back to Poland. Um, I had both of her cars, so I had four cars I was rolling around in. So yeah, I was spoiled. And I was born with them. Everybody was probably on this show right now. We are live on Facebook. I told you I will not be defeated. Last week, I don't know what happened. We got kicked out, but I tell you, I was just, uh. So now we back, we bigger, we better. Sunday brunt, the 18th edition, all-star cast. We're going to toast it up for the all-star edition. The All Star 18th Edition. Put your hey. cups in. And Tara, what hey. New York for? Oh, New York Giants over there. Yeah. Oh no, Tara. Oh no. But they ain't good. I have to. I don't have a choice. <laughs> it is what it is when you got that Irish cream. When you got that Irish cream in the coffee cup in the morning, it is what it is. We ain't mad at you, Tara. Carolyn Town, 501C3 with Living Beyond You and Child Development Behavioral Specialist from Bayonne, New Jersey. Yeah. Tamika Dixon, <laughs> WNBA great. Current business owner and future Hall of Famer out of Linden, New Jersey. Here we go again with the Microsoft, the Microsoft pulling the Microsoft on, on Virginia. The WNBA great <laughs> general manager, future <laughs> Hall of Famer out of D.C., and hopefully we get Eric Williams on here, former NBA player with the Boston Celtics and current business owner out of Newark, New Jersey. Then we got the Godfather. We got the God, the Godma, Virginia Tola. We got the Godfather, Ernest Ruffin, former basketball standout at Bloomfield College. They don't even know about that. And current entrepreneur Ooh. out of Newark, New Jersey. We're going to let you talk about yourself, Ruff. <laughs> Vin Lamont Bugs Jr., ODU alumni. Okay, former basketball standout and author out of Hampton, VA. He could tell you a few stories about AI, but we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> Adrian Goodson is your host. Need I, need not say more. Google it. Hall of Famer. <laughs> yes, we're in the house. Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon. Morning, yeah. good afternoon. We got we represent from all across the, the, the country. We represent, you know, Harlem. We represent down there in Florida. Where you at? Tampa? Tampa. Tampa. We represent in Linden. We represent in we represent in Cali out there in LA. We we, we <laughs> represent in South Dakota, y'all. <laughs> We everywhere. Stay on New Jersey. Stay on New Jersey. Cornerstone. A New Jersey. <laughs> on your way to Staten Island. Go over the bridge. We hot like that. Piggybacking off of previous conversations, like my homegirl always says, both the NBA and the WNBA have decided on the season, but whoop, they decided to cut it short. The girls started back up in Bradenton, and the players are front and center still with saying her name. While the men bounced back from a weird change of events, am I am I correct, you guys? That began with the Bucks opting out of play, and meanwhile, Virginia, Gamma, the Storm, the Sparks, the Aces, and the Lynx vied for the top spot. Oop, excuse me. Um, they uh, the 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 Storm, the Storm, and the Aces clinched the first and the second spot. Let me get that right for you. Correct me because I felt it. However, the team. Like the sky and the sun and the mercury, they're heating up the stage a little bit. And uh, Minnesota, let's not forget them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I ain't gonna forget you. Girl's doing an amazing job considering that she pretty yes. much her team is new. Yes. So I want to give her a big shout out because she's down there doing some good coaching. They right there. I think they're sitting in fourth spot. Third, third or be. fourth, yeah. Yeah, the sparks. Third. Third. This is like they're all bunched yeah, up. The sparks in the, the yeah, the sparks in the link. Uh, uh, they have the same uh record. No, the I think. sparks like got one. The sparks got more got wins than one love. game. Yeah, I got one, one game. One up. Okay. Yeah. One game up. Okay, that's what I looked at yesterday. So, so who's gonna um, win it? But that's good. You know. Well, since uh, I ain't employed aces. to get a bonus, I don't really care. But, uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, it's been a great, it's been a great season so far, and it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a fight to the end. It's gonna be interesting. I want to see if they're gonna tough. Up those games. Yeah, Adrian. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. Adrian aces. Wilson is just Adrian Wilson might. Just might be the best player in the league right now. Yeah, she she's something else. That's one that's Dawn's girl, A Z. She's nice. Yeah, she got the she got the total package. And the thing I love about her is she played hard and she's a killer. You know. And she lefty. Yeah, yeah and she's okay. nice. And it's a good lefty. You know how sometimes lefties look awkward? No, nah, her yeah, stuff's she's smooth looks, with it. It looks legit, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh you know, she's playing phenomenal, you know. Bill was sitting up in there looking crazy at one minute with that haircut and that bandana <laughs> on his head. He was looking like Chevy Chase uh, out of that movie. I can't remember back in the day where he had that big old afro on. He came out act, pretending to be a black guy and had on the Lakers uniform. Um, I tell you what, like, he was looking bad. And uh, they did some bloopers on him. He, he just was, I, I don't know, I guess he was just trying to be, you know, humorous during a really a, a really tense time in the bubble so you know he's living the just, bubble life right now he's living the bubble life <laughs> no the bubble life. <laughs> listen they sent they sent a barber in there for all of the guys um uh, to get you know to get their you know get their get their face taken care of and get their hair done and everything like that because you know guys need barbers too you know, and they need to be groomed too, cause some a couple couple of the dudes in the NBA were looking real grizzly, you know. But um, you know, um, I'm glad, you know, they they got them set up in there nice, and um, you know, we just there's there's a couple of topics that are out there. I mean, on a wider scope, the NBA, you know, they contributed 300 million towards economic empowerment in the black community, but not without two days of non-play and player deliberation. So that's the hot topic, you know, and my, my question is the black athlete redefining the American way of thinking um, in regards to the sport. And that, that, that's, you know, and that's that's based on the, the WNBA game protests, the NBA game protests starting with the Bucks um, and, um, you know, Jacob Blake shooting. Uh, there's just been so many things that have gone on. We lost another great in uh, Cliff Robinson this week and. Uh, we also lost Lou Olson. Um, there's so many things that are going on, you guys, right now. But can can anybody can take this first? Um, you know, is it are we are we redefining the American way of thinking as as far as how we how we deserve to be treated in the in in the workforce? Well, I think it's being redefined. I think that um, athletes have shown that you know it's not the shut up and dribble what was handed to LeBron, you know, months ago. I think athletes are showing that they're more than just athletes. You know, you have an opinion. And then, you know, when you talk about the Black Lives Movement, you know, especially let's just talk about basketball specifically, that, you know, men and women is predominantly Afro-American. You know, but you don't just see those people. I think a lot of people are joining in because it's, it's actually bigger than the game. And if you look at it, because when I say it's bigger than the game, you have a lot of people joining that. Even though I think that athletes are using their platform because you saw baseball, people stopped playing. You saw in tennis, the young lady, um, can't recall her name right now, but she's awesome. She didn't go out and compete and play. Then you have all the actors. And I just think it's a time where people really just have had enough. And athletes are more than just athletes. and. I'm glad they're standing up because, you know, I think people look at Afro-Americans and they'd be like, oh, we can't be successful unless we have a ball in our hand, and whether that's a basketball, football, baseball, or any type of ball. And then the next thing they'll look at, like, okay, if they ain't got a ball, they got a mic in their hand, and that's a rapper, 
or a singer. And, and, you know, we're multifaceted and LeBron is showing you that with him owning undefeated, you know, spreading his wings. You're looking at, I mean, Michael Jordan showed you that you're more than just an athlete. And he, to me, he's the epitome. He not only played, but he went and owned the team now. And that's what you want to do, be the owner. So I truly believe that, yeah, it's being redefined. It's a long time. It's long overdue. And I just think, um, you know, overall, you know, Afro-Americans and us as athletes, we just had enough. You know, don't try to put us in a box and think that when the world is in crisis, the only thing we need to do is entertain you. And that's what blacks are not saying anymore. No, we're not here to entertain you. Athletes are like, we're not here to entertain you. We're more than that. And they want to let their voices heard. And that's what's happening right now because you see as soon as something jump off, <laughs> it can it can it can go south real quick. <laughs> it can go south <laughs> real quick. And you saw when that shooting Absolutely. happened with Jacob Blake, you know, I mean, that wasn't a delayed reaction. That was an immediate reaction, you know, because I heard that Milwaukee, you know, they hadn't even touched bases with Chris Paul, who's the president of the players union. They were just like, enough, we're not playing. You know, deal with it. And 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 now it's going to make people think before they do things, you know? So yeah, it's changing. I think it's done change. It's going to be interesting to what it unfolds to, because once everybody else comment, I got a question out there that I want to throw on the table, but I want everybody else to comment first. I would, I'm um, in agreement with that. It's definitely redefined. And if we look at years ago, um, you know, we look at the Craig Hodges and the others that were just basically by themselves and got outcast because, you know, you know, a lot of our other entertainers, athletes or whatever, were worried about the money, you know what I mean? And how that affect now is more of a collective, like it's unison now. And that's, that's something that is unprecedented right now. You know what I mean? Like we're seeing it, we're like, NBA and WNBA are the forefront, but like you said, Penny, um, uh, Major League Baseball, you look at what the teams did, look what the Mets and um, I think it was the Padres, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they did a moment of silence and then they walked off the field and then several games were canceled. And even the uh, National Hockey League, you know, and we are redefining what the black athlete, black entertainer is. We are brands, we are businesses, and you know, we are not at each other's throat. You know, now when we're together, united, they have to listen to us, you know, and that's something that we won't really do in the past. So, you know, that's my view on it. Absolutely. Godfather, you got anything? Oh, I'm sorry to make, go ahead, me. Oh, just to, to continue off what Vid, you know, the first thing that I always thought about when all of this has kind of been happening is, you know, what if the, uh, what if the NFL players stood beside Cat, stood behind him, everybody collectively, just stood behind him when mm -hmm. that happened? It'd be a different Absolutely. conversation. Um, so now yeah, you have probably this. probably wouldn't be here. Exactly. So now you have all of this happening and now you really have a united front with all the athletes across, you know, all platforms. And that's why you're starting to get the needle to move a little bit. It's no longer just one or two people where they can kind of hide behind, you know, people can kind of hide behind everything else. Now it's everybody collectively moving and now change has got to come because of that. So they've, they're, you know, the needle is being moved because it's a collective effort. So each Absolutely. generation, each generation, the younger generation really understand their worth and that they are the product and that they are the business. My generation and older, we didn't want to rock the boat. We were, you know, get paid, Absolutely. don't cause any problems like the young, young fella said. This generation don't care. They're like, yo, this is what's got to happen. We not playing. We calling our cousins and our brothers and everybody in every other sport. They not playing, and this is going to, you know, you're going to correct this. Or, I mean, they're pouring money, like, you know, trying to give everybody money and organizations money and stuff to try to, you know, try to right some wrongs, but it's going to take a little more than that. you got to prosecute these police officers, number one. 
When I when I was a young fella, you know, I got pulled over when I was 19, 18, or something like that. I was going to Great Adventures, Adrian um, and Tamika. You guys uh-huh. know Tara, you know that too. Uh, I was going to Great Adventures with my brother and my cousin. I got pulled over. And the first thing I was worried about, uh, Penny, was, am I going to get a ticket? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was all I was concerned about. I wasn't concerned if I was going to get shot. I mean, I even got smart with the dude. And I was speeding. Right? I was wrong. I was speeding. And I was like, yo, dude, what, you know, what you put me over for? Oh, you was doing, you know, 75 and a 60. All right, hurry up and write me a ticket. Can you imagine saying that today? Yeah. So, that, probably you know, it's straight to jail. Straight to jail. I'll probably get shot. Pat, pat. You know what's interesting too, Rob? It's interesting because you just reminded me. I remember, you know, I used to live in Vegas and I would be going to 7-Eleven and drive all the way home from California, right? When I was um, first a gentleman. And it's interesting because it is the black male because I've been pulled over doing hundreds, like just trying to get from Cali to, you know, down to Vegas to go home. But one thing I would say about those policemen, they actually let me go. Like, I, they be like, you were speeding. I'd be like, yeah, I know. And, you know, you know, I would say they asked for registration. And it's been many a times I can say they actually let me go. But it's, it's something about, I don't know why they're so threatened with the male figure. Because I'm a conspiracy it's, uh, theorist. Because you don't see the women, you know, having that problem. But if you're a black male, it's, it's like if you even say boo or move the wrong way, you can literally be shot three, four times. Well, I think the black male more, but the ladies, I've seen them throwing ladies around, you know, young ladies today. Like, this is crazy. Well, like, maybe they have. Why, I just know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't throw the young lady. They're throwing young ladies around and just push the, you can't. Who, who does that, right? But I, I'm a conspiracy guy, and I think, you know, ever since, you know, black folks celebrated so hard on the OJ case, I think a pack was made. After the OJ case, after OJ won, I think police had a, I think they had a major league conference call nationally that nothing like this will ever happen again. And they, we haven't won a big case since. And this thing, this brutality thing has gone to, and I've never seen anything like this, right? And so. Is that a, is a, it's definitely at an all time high. The thing that I always believe is, you know, when I, when I kind of look at it, I think a lot of this is happening because as a race, we have made long strides. And I'm talking about in the entrepreneurship, um, business owners, you know, all the way full circle. And I think there are just a lot of people out there that don't like change and want to remind, you know, Afro-Americans that you're beneath me. No, we're not beneath you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us have understood our value. And I still believe, too, that some people may be mad. And I don't think I'm reaching when I'm saying this that Obama made it to the White House. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you imagine, the, and they, I think a lot of people are like, okay, just because he made it to them, when I say he, they're talking about one guy. Don't think the rest of you guys got any rights and they just don't want kamikaze on everybody else, you know? And that might be reaching, but I truly believe that. And, it's, and, and you know, as opposed to, think about it. Why is it so much opposition just to give someone a human right. It's not even an equal right. We ask when we ask in a human right, you know, and considering that, and I don't really care if I offend anyone out there, um, considering that we built this country, this country is built on our ancestors' back. I don't have to go anywhere. You know, I had a Mexican guy one time, unfortunately, he was Mexican, and I was playing basketball, and I remember in college, and we got in an argument over foul, and he told me to go back to my country. And I told him, this is my country, because my <laughs> ancestors. <laughs> And considering I'm in San Diego, I didn't say go back to Tijuana. You know, I had to explain to him, um, this is my country. My ancestors built this country here. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we all pack up and go to Jamaica, Penny. We all pack up and go to Jamaica. Pack all the way back. Let's go. And that's why I say it's a it's a human right, and that's why I don't understand why you got so much opposition to. Just being human, because like they say, if we were different than if you cut us, why is our blood red just like everybody else? Why is the Mexican blood red, the Asian blood red, um, the white people blood is red? So why do we have to, and this goes back to, yeah, you got a lot of people out there that don't like change, and they would prefer that they, they race be the dominant race, you know? And, and, and this is why we're facing this, what we're facing. But 
I, I ain't lying to you. I'm happy. Yeah, enough is enough. No matter what the cause is, no matter what it takes. And that's and that's what's happening now. And Vid, to talk to your point, I'm going to say as a race, we finally got it right. And you know what we finally got right? This is what we finally got right. We don't fall for the divide and conquer. Now we unite it because that's the old trick. Let me get a couple that's going to go left and it spoils the movement. But because stuff is so ugly now, that the uglier to get, the more the movement just just the movement goes from this to this, and this done became powerful because now we know divided they conquer, united we stand, and this is what they're facing right now, and that's why it's an incredible force. And that's yeah, what everybody has to remember: you have to stay united because you can you can establish a lot of things when you're denied, when you're united, and that's what they that's what they're facing, and that's why they won't win right now. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. And just to elaborate on what Meek was talking about, he was talking about the NFL commissioner, what if, you know, and uh, CNN wrote a powerful article about him talking about if the NFL commissioner wishes he had listened earlier to Colin Kaepernick, you know, if he had listened earlier. And so, you know, everything is 2020 in hindsight. We all oh my god you know if i could just go back in time with the things that i know now everything would be better i'd make better choices so you know um you know here we are today um you know then we always say 400 years but it's more it's been more than 400 years we got to get stuck off that magic number 400 because it's been more than that that we've been dealing with stuff and going through things and you know i know i listen to stories from my mother from mrs listen to stories from my grandparents and you know, just about, you know, the ways of overcoming. But my grandmother was, you know, she didn't play that racism stuff. And, you know, if you came in the house because you were fighting somebody because of the color of their skin, you was going to have problems. And so, you know, um, we just have to come up with uh, together as a group of athletes and politicians to work on these issues. And I think that, you know, by them being off for two or three days, you know, and sitting down and talking with everybody, talking to Michelle Roberts, talking to Adam Silver, talking with some of the politicians, you know, they did come up with a better plan. And I'm glad that they did decide that they did decide to continue on with the season because not everybody's making 100 million, y'all, you know, 190 million. So there was some disagreement with LeBron in regards to that. Uh, uh, Ruff, maybe you can elaborate on that from the on the on the on the men's side where, you know, he was saying some things that uh, that people didn't like in the meeting uh, because he was coming from a side where, you know, he gets paid all of that money and he's, his decisions can be different. Yeah, well, I think LeBron, a couple of things. I think, number one, I think LeBron's the best young fella. I don't know how anybody could not like this young guy. Man. He's a phenomenal yeah. young fella. Um, cat came out of high school, raised by his mom. They bounced around as a kid. He's a phenomenal young business cat. He's conscientious. He built a school with his own money. He took his his crew that he grew up with and got them all in business around him. So now they're all millionaires, right? Um, I think more than anything, uh, he was probably upset that no one contacted him. Like the Bucks just made a decision. George Hill and those cats made a decision, you know, last minute to not play, and they didn't contact anybody. Initially, Penny... The Toronto and Boston was the first teams talking about not playing. They were just talking about it after this happened. And then Milwaukee just said, we ain't playing. Because if you've seen the clips, uh, Orlando was out there warming up. So it was really, really last minute. And I think LeBron was upset about that. And then I think he, he was like, he's, he, he looked at himself as the leader of all of this stuff. So... You know, they made a decision without him. And he said, you know, I'm not playing. So I think he was more upset and that, 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 they didn't, uh, that, that they didn't ask him first. But after he thought about it, the best thing to do is play. They lose a lot of money, not just him, the league. And plus, it'll be ongoing. They'll lose money this year, but then they're going to go back to the collective bargaining agreement and they're going to adjust that so that, you know, because the sponsors and everybody, once Adam said, once we agree to play, we got to play. We can't stop because there's going to be some ramifications financially for everybody. And so the way to recoup those ramifications, they would go into the collective bargain and take money from those guys even next year. So I think once all that was laid out, they said, okay, let's just get back in and play. Plus we got a platform here. Um, 
the NFL, if the NFL shut down, uh, the cops would get arrested tomorrow. The NFL is the sport in our country. I would if, agree with exactly. that. If they shut exactly. down, if them boys say we not playing, those Wisconsin cops and that Brianna, those Brianna Taylor cops will be arrested the next day. And see, what I didn't even understand about the shooting, just to shift gears back to that, even, you know, that I didn't understand, I mean, the guy didn't have anything in his hand. They could have tackled him at any point. And then the one cop said that they tased him. Okay, so is your taser not working? Because he just kept walking like it was normal. But I don't believe it takes seven shots to put somebody down or shooting them in front of their kids because you have four cars. They let them walk right by them. I mean, tackle them. That's what, and so now this guy is going to be paralyzed. And, you know, my friend, uh, me and another friend had a conversation about this yesterday. And the friend said to me, but Penny, when are we going to learn saying Afro-Americans that you comply? I said, okay, we had one that complied and lost his life. He got his neck stepped on. You know, I said, but I'm looking at the guy that's walking around in the car. He doesn't have anything in his hands. Why don't somebody just grab him? I the mean, excessive and then the, force the, is too much. And then the cop said he tased him. I mean, you're that close. Did you miss? Because the taser usually takes you down. But then the, to allow him to walk from around the car all the way around and all the policemen look at him and get in the car and then just to unload seven bullets in him. I mean, and then say, oh, there was a knife in the car. We don't know if a knife is in the car or not, but I'm talking about he never should have made it to get in the car with the policemen sitting there. That's kind of like, I would have preferred the police to grab him and throw him down than to shoot the guy seven times. And this is why I told my friend, I say, so it's okay if you say you don't know what he has in the car, but I'm like, he walked right past all you guys, you know? Yeah, and me. then after getting Wisconsin, I get it that there's more to the video that we seen with the little, you know, the Caucasian kid who's walking with AK-7, you know, they say he was protecting a gas station at first, but these people are literally still walking in the street with these high power rifles. And, um, I'm, you know, like, you know, they do say it's more to that tape, but the point is, I'm like, okay, well, what's wrong with that picture? Because if I had just been an innocent standby, I think I would have ran because I don't know if somebody's going to unload at me. Yeah, there's a reference. I mean, I mean, the streets have turned into a war zone, to be honest with you. It, it's something with the cops against brothers, black men, no question. I saw a, I saw a video yesterday on Twitter. A white dude was pulled over by the cops. and his, He was in the car with his wife and his kids. <clears throat> and the cop pulled him over on private property. And white dude was like, yo, this is private property. He was yelling and pointing at him. And the dude said, let me get your license and registration. He threw it on the ground. He threw the ID on the ground and said, fuck you. I'm sorry, Adrian, I can't get it. Yeah, you're going to put, and put me over in front of my wife and kids? I mean, pointing his finger at the police officer, officer as calm as possible. You know, no, so it's definitely a difference. There's something against that black man. These dudes really go in, pulling guns, shooting five, six, seven, eight times in the back. I mean, it's the second guy they shot in the back like this. So, um, you know, so it, it's got, they got to, I'm like Jay-Z, you know, y'all killed Malcolm X and let Zinnemann walk. I'm not advocating violence, but I'm saying, where the hood at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's got <laughs> I mean, come on. You know? I mean, damn. I mean, again, I'm not advocating <laughs> violence on no front, but I'm just saying, this is, it's just, it's a little it's something. something. I yeah, mean, and it's just if you're a parent, if you're a parent, you know, I'm not a parent, but I have, you know, nephews, you know, I have brothers, you know, I have brothers, nephews, have a lot of nephews. And that's crazy to me that it got to be one on one that if a cop pulls you over, put your hands on the steering wheel. You know, when every other race don't, you don't have to get that, that teaching to. And I do say this, you know, um, yeah, the cops, they should be judged harshly. I think they need to be retrained, you know, because that's, I mean, it's clearly racial bias, you know, no, because. If you give that guy a life penalty, Penny, this will stop. If they give yeah. these cops the maximum sentence, it'll stop. And take their pension and add, take that pension one day. You are a criminal now. It'll stop like that tomorrow. You know, um, it's funny you say that, Pity. Uh, uh, we have these calls, weekly calls, some of my friends from Charlotte. Um, and so one of them just got mad at me because uh, he kept saying, well, rough. He said what Penny said. 
her friend said to her, well, he wasn't complying, Ruff. He was just walking around. I said, yeah, would, would I get that? But I mean, they couldn't tackle him seven times. Yeah. You know, Ruff, I, I don't agree with it. I said, no, you don't agree with it, Wood, because it ain't hit home. But if something happened to your daughter and he got upset, don't bring my daughter in this. I said, I'm not trying to advocate anything against your daughter. But what I'm saying to you is we got kids, all of us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, mm -hmm. so what if your daughter's in a car with a dude? Right. You, you don't know. You know, you don't know how this is going to go down, man. So, exactly. So we can't yeah. look at this like, yeah, he just needed to stop. Come on, man. White people not getting shot like this. And so, he was walking. The thing that I got was he literally walked around the car while they just watched him. He didn't have anything in his hands. Grab him. That was kind of like how I was, you know, grab him. And, and then they're going to be like, well, you don't know if you got nothing in the hand. They look him right at him. And then the guy said he tased him. So my question is, if you tased him, was your taser not working? Because he right. kept walking without a flinch. Right. They said, so did you they, really said tase both, him? they said both cops tased him. So now two tasers don't work. Get the hell out of here. Come on. Stop it. Come on. Two tasers malfunction. Come on. And and it's okay. Yeah, that's why you gotta have Doracell. Doracell. All I'm gonna say is Doracell. The other thing and then is what happens this. with you shooting in the car? If one of the bullets go through him and hit one of the kids that was in there. Cause one didn't they age from three to eight? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I'm it just like, be a dead so, child. They don't so care. So say the bullet goes through him, ricochets off something, and hit one of the kids. And the thing that really baffled me was, and and I know like people, some people are gonna be mad that I'm saying this. He had the guy's shirt, pull him on back out. He was holding his shirt when he shot him. Why couldn't you just pull him back it's out? Crazy. It's really crazy. I don't. It's like, right. My thing is, why in all these situations is shoot to kill? You know what I mean? Like, they supposed to be trained. At close range. If you At have, close like, range too. you know, as being a gun owner, when you go and do your, even the classes, you know, you're taught, like, you don't aim to kill unless necessary. You can hit a, you can take out a foot, a leg, you know what I mean? Like, if it's if it has to go down that, you know what I mean? Somebody's back turned to you, that's not, we. if we did that, you know, if we did that and claim self-defense, we wouldn't get off with self-defense because our life wasn't in danger. Anytime somebody, um, if you can get away from the danger or the, the person that's supposed to be, uh, is uh, threatening you or whatever, has their back turned to you and you kill them? That's that's not self defense. No yeah. court in America is going to say that's self defense. So why is it that you know these police officers could get off doing those things? You know what I mean? And that's what's. I mean, it's not really puzzling to me because I think we have to also remember that. This system ain't for us. It never was for us. When it was established, you know, people of color won't human. Men, um, children and women were property, you know. And again, like you all said, yeah, um, Goodell, Roger Goodell has said, well, he should have listened to Cap. Well, let's be real. He's saying that now because he's saying what's going on right now. He's seeing that business is being affected. Mm -hmm. Before this, this country, you call it a, a republic or a, demo, a democratic nation, before all that is capitalist, right? It's about money. Their po pockets get in touch. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's the same thing with uh, Washington Redskins. Why in 2020 when the Trav Nation been complaining and no other, no sponsors were pulling, been pulling out. And then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but you know, um, George Floyd in a, in a protest goes and then uh, talks of boycott cotton. Now they want to pull out, you know what I mean? And it's, 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 I mean, it's a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but we also cannot overlook that fact, those factors. It's like, as, as Ruff was saying, the black man 
um, these things are do, um, going on with the black men and black women is a um, look at our, uh, the psyche of it. When they describe us, when they look at us, they look at us as strong and aggressive. You know what I mean? Strong and aggressive. Look at Inference. Exactly. God forbid if you have your, your dreads or your braids like you have in your hair. But exactly. see, the thing that I'm even more offensive by, that I always say that I've always been offensive by, is this right here. They love our culture, but they don't love it from us. That's mm -hmm. what I'd be like by for them. They love our culture. And when I say our culture, our braids, our dreads, everything, our women, big butts, music, our oh. noses, our music. Yes. Throw everything Food. down on the table. They love it all. And to me, it's real offensive, but you don't love it from us. Yeah. You know, let a white boy be a good rapper or a white girl have a big butt, you know, Botox or lip, or if she's <laughs> have them or have them or whatever. I mean, everything. You love everything about us, but you don't want us with the culture. That's when I be, that's why sometimes I used to tell my friends, wake up. I mean, you know, and I ain't got nothing against them because I'm going to tell you something right now, and people will be mad when I say this too. I love the Kardashians because I'm going to tell you why. They done market themselves to the high heaven. I ain't got nothing, nothing on nobody that can call <laughs> into me. Show me the secret, right? But the point is, having black women always had big butts before J Lo and the Kardashians, and our lips have always been full Extremely on our black full, men. Penny. Uh -huh. Extremely full lips and very. Very nice butts, yes. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just mentioning that because that's the money maker right now. That's the money maker. Oh, you had to do it with Shea Big Butt. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm talking about like the rap game. And, and you know, if you look back at the Ice Cubes and the Snoops and all the people before them, they had to fight to get the music on there. But let a white boy throw it down. And I love me some Eminem, don't get me wrong. He's going straight to the top. He's going instantaneously number one. You know what I'm saying? And, and and it really ain't no different than when they used to take all the music from all the great singers back in the day. And that's the thing that I want to get to is it kills me how you can love everything about us, but don't want it from us. And you can't take our culture without taking us too. And, and so now that, can I can I just say one thing, bro? Sure, but, but and absolutely. And not only they they take it. They tear us down. They made fun of our noses, our hair, our lips, our butts, our bills, all of that. You know what I mean? But Close then, the and our music. Made for us. When we exactly. go in there, we got to buy a size bigger. The guy, I have to go get my clothes taken up because I'm one of those ones with that black girl butt. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But they want it. They want the lips and everything. You know what I mean? So, so Penny, the, the reason so why like is because, you know, when you own something, Penny, you could, you know, kind of do what you want with it. You could steal it and shape it and make it yours, right? Yeah. Uh, if you don't have it and you got it and it looks good on you, I could steal it from you. I could get a new butt. I can get new lips, right? Um, I can steal your music. And so it goes back to economics, right? And until we start really owning things and start selling them, like, I don't... I, I never understood why these guys sold the rap industry back. Mm -hmm. right? when, we're old enough to know when the rap music first came out, nobody was messing with it but us, right? And so when Puffy and them and, and, and um, Russell and them started them companies, man, you know, every rapper who could rap got a shot. And then they sold those companies back, and now you only get four or five at a time, okay, that get put on. So... When when you when you don't own the narrative, you can't create the narrative. Although you may create it culturally and artistically, if you don't own it, I could take your pity. You just sold me your bike, and you put you you tricked it out. The bike was the bomb. It was tricked out. Nice, right? Now I buy it from you, and I take what, all that good work you did to it, take it all off. What you gonna say? You can't say nothing. You sold it to me, so. We have to understand and teach our kids economics and the basic of economics and business and entrepreneurship. And if you don't own a business, you got to support that business to build an economy and a base. See, if we had in, in, in Milwaukee 10 black companies that were $50 million companies apiece, just $50 million, those 10 CEOs can go to Kenosha and say, 
if this guy is not arrested by two, in two weeks, we're going to move to Chicago. And they would be arrested. So until we get there, I just saw you got a march in 1963 on D.C. in March 2020. They'll have the same march in 2040 if we don't get there. It's economic. And that's why, and that's why, and talks. I totally agree with you, Ref, um, Ruff, because just like what Vic was saying and what you guys were saying in terms of economics, where this new millennium done showed you that if you don't do what we're going to say, we're going to boycott you and you're going to lose money. And that's why I think the businesses this time got smart and said, hey, we want to be on the right side of history. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's the difference, too, because the businesses are now not throwing, when Capnil, they were afraid that the businesses would leave. But then now that they see, when I say these massive people, white, black, Mexican, everybody coming together to say change, they know that this group can boycott them and they're not going to make money. So now all of a sudden, they're backing the people that are boycotting or, you know, or protesting because they understand the power of, of how you say, the power of being united, you know, because the bottom line is, yeah, it's, all this could have been avoided. And unfortunately, you know, Kaepernick paid with his career. You know, you can't go back in time and get those things. And, you know, and it's like I said to a young lady, I gave a speech. It was, it was a virtual one, maybe two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I was asked the question, and I tell, and I don't care, I don't care what you read. I don't care what somebody really tells you. Until you black and have your experiences, because I know what type of black experiences I had being a, a black woman. You know, the thing that they try to put on, people talk about the black male. When you're a black woman, they always try to say, when you're powerful, you're strong, and you speak up for yourself, we're an angry black woman. Mm-hmm. No, we're not an angry black woman. You know, I can, I told somebody, you'll never know I never should have had to say out of my mouth as a black general manager, you know, I'm, I'm, I was writing a chapter in my memoirs and I started writing about this because, you know, uh, Paula Madison, for you guys don't know who Paula is, Paula, Paula was the highest black in Universal. She used to own the Sparks. When I was fired, she said to me, she, that's, my, that's one of my mentors, Paula said to me, Penny, you know what, you've been lucky. She said, you lucky because you went 20 years and haven't had to face what you're facing right now that is, you know, just outrageous. You know what I'm saying? Just outrageous. And I said to her, we were having a discussion. I said, people don't, they always, the people on the outside think one thing and that may not even be what's happening. You know, one time I had to defend myself and you know what my defense had to be? Listen to what I'm about to tell you. And this is why I say, unless you in this skin, you don't really know what it is. I had to say this one time and I'm not ashamed to say it. And then people can figure out who I had to say it to, where I had to say one time to some of my superiors, you know what? I worked for years in my job. I refuse to dummy myself down just, just to make you happy. My mother ain't teach me that. It goes back to how you raised. My mom was a maid, didn't have much money, but had enough to teach us to stand for something, have compassion, treat people how you want to be treated. I never should have had to say out my mouth, but believe you, I had to say it two or three times. Mm. I won't dummy down myself to make you happy. I won't do it. You know, and that's where it comes standing for something. And I had my whole legacy challenge, but I'm happy because I go, I will not dummy down and I will fight you because I'm going to stand up because most blacks won't stand up or do what Kaepernick did because one, they're going to lose the money. They think because they don't have enough money, like I've told people, and people can figure out who I'm talking about. You got way more money than me, but I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to fight for myself because I got the truth on my side. You know what I'm saying? And you have to not be afraid of all those things. And the thing that I say that people forget is I don't come for money, so I don't value it like that. Yeah, money gives you freedom, but it's not. I'd rather be a happy person, you know what I'm saying, and stand for something. But yeah, on many occasions, like I say, three that I can remember, I had to say, you know what? Say what you want to say, but I'm not going to dummy myself down. You can make me look. You can threaten me. What about my legacy? My legacy is going to be I stood up for myself. When black girls look at me, I want them to say this right here. I was amazing. And I'm not even saying that to be conceited. I know what I've done. I think I'm the only black GM, male or female, if you look around any sport, with three titles. So where was everybody 
champion me when I had those two titles. And like I said, not just female, male. Show me another male that has uh, another male um, executive in sports that has the resume I have. There isn't one. That's tough. So this is why I said, you got a hell of a even point. threatened with my job, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to dummy myself down. I'm not afraid to be embarrassed. I'm not afraid if you think you can humiliate me. You will not push me around. I said, I will fight. And no matter how it looks to the public, and this is what I told my friend, you and my friend is Caucasian. And he's cool. You know, we were just having a conversation. I said, and I don't care. You can say, I, I know how you feel. I sympathize with you. But you really don't because your skin is not this color. People don't understand what we go to do. You, and ask yourself this. And I think we all have did this. And I, I realized this when I was maybe in 30 and it first happened. Sometimes people are offensive and they don't even know they're offensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you face that. I'd be like, wow. It's, it's, I, 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 one time I thought I was being called Uncle Tom, but just haven't been said the words. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, and that's what I tell people. You know, you have to stand for something, but we're talking about the black men now and people just telling that, but if you're a black female, it's a whole nother can of worms. And God forbid if you're, you're powerful. And, and, and when I say powerful, now if a white, and I'm, I'm just using this, if a white person speaks up, they're passionate, a black person, they're angry. And when I say powerful, I want to define what power is, okay? This is what I mean by power, intelligent. Mm -hmm. So I want to give the power what it is, if you're intelligent, can articulate what you want to say, or, 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 you know, don't get along with it. It's yeah, you, you're an angry black woman. And this is the thing that I, I think people need to put out there because I mean, we're discriminated against as well. And, 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 and I think while we're talking about black lives matter, that needs to be brought to the forefront. I, I wanted to that, jump in here um, and, and yeah, take it back to yeah, I, I had I was listening to everyone and these are very incredible points and they are very true. I don't want to take it back to what Vid said about this, you know, we were bought here as property. And it comes the mental part of it is the reason why we're still sitting in the hamster and the wheel. The mental part was when we did get here, the black male was feared because he was strong, he was robust, he wasn't an animal. And so that fear paralyzed, <clears throat> excuse me the masters or the white people, whoever who brought us here, they use that, then they put it back on the male by taking him away from his family, splitting up the unit. So he's by himself. Now the women are on the plantation and they're with the babies. And even the babies have been ripped from the women as well. And then, you know, the difference between the light skin and the dark skin in the field versus the bed winches and different things. And this this mentality, honestly, is the poison that keeps us as a people where we are today. That's where you have to look at it from. Why is the black male targeted? Because he's strong. You know what they fear is our resilience, right? Fought us over, beat us, killed us, shot us in the field, raped women, children, and we're still here. They're like, they're just not going anywhere. So that fear, is a fear of our resilience. But the flip side of that is our fear is not knowing what to expect on the other side of the opposition. So I say this with COVID, everyone has been neutralized, right? Celebrities aren't performing. No one's, everyone's equal now. You can reach people that you can never reach before. People are now starting to say, you know what? I could give more as a celebrity. I can give more, I have this money, I have this power. People are starting to, to, to hone in and tune in to themselves because we've been ripped right now. Seriously, this is a positive of COVID with status quo, money. You can, you can be a billionaire and still die from COVID. You can be a billionaire and all your businesses can be shut down because they're not open, right? So now things are neutralizing and people, the pedestals are gone. Everyone's feet are touching the same ground right now. So this is why we're seeing a lot of progress in this because we are moving. If you are not moving, people are not going to buy you, right? We sell ourselves by our actions, not by our words. So all of these protests and things and different things like that, they're seeing that we're not playing, but they're seeing, we're seeing more importantly, that we're getting results. 
Because that's why people don't do things. It's either fear or lack of motivation because they don't know, okay, I'm going to lose weight, right? But I don't know if I'm really going to do it. So, but once I see that little 10 pounds going, I'm getting on that treadmill even more. I'm going to eat healthier. So they're seeing now, look at us combined, just bringing it back to slavery days. One, one slave would run and get away. But when Harriet Tubman, be, Tubman began the movement, she also had white Republicans, okay? These are the people. We started out as all Republicans. There weren't any Democrats until they split it. A lot of people don't know that either, okay? And so these people, socialites, started to help. Why? Because they saw the results of her sweat and blood and other people. People came here and they started setting up shop. We are smart people and we are resilience. Resilience is, is even better than having a knowledge because no matter what happens to you, you are getting back up. You're like that bug that just won't leave you alone. You have smacked it, stepped on it, still flying. My like, goodness, what in the world? That is an annoyance to people. And that is also very, very scary. I could step on them, I can rape them, kill them, take their money, overtax them, send them to jail, shoot their kids in the back, and they're still here? Power. That is the psychological component that we all need to sit on and rest in, because that is where we are going to stay empowered by knowing this. Hey, we keep on doing this, they are not going away. Like I said before in another, on another taping show, I meant to say that when people, when we see us, we sell ourselves by our actions, but when they see that we're not going anywhere on our own move, you know, you can say, I have a mission, and then you can have people say, oh, they're not going to do it, and you keep on doing it and doing it, and eventually your results come. Now you get everyone else hopping on, white, black, Asian, Spanish, they're hopping on. Why? Because there's results coming. So my, it's, it's, it's not even an advice, it's just an overview, but to keep it going. This is why we're seeing it's sustaining because we are being consistent and we are not going away. You In your face method, in your face, yes, people are dying. People have died all along to get us to where we are right now, but we are equal right now. What is celebrityism right now? Because you have to play inside of a bubble. There's no shows anymore for all of the singers. What are you doing little online stuff? But you are just like everyone else sitting at home, people working, different things that we're doing at home. And you are more reachable. But more importantly, so much loss is happening that you are now scared yourself. And now you're going to start reflecting. What can I do differently? Let me invest in a school for people. Let me invest, you know, 300 million to, to up, you know, root our young men and our young youths out of the situations that they're in. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Why? because we are seeing that no one is exempt from this situation at all. You could die, get sick, just like anybody else. Billionaire, $2 in your bank account. That equalizes and it neutralizes and it plateaus where we are in society. Now you can see a societal shift, which is taking place. Repeat, anyone who believes, oh, it's just, no, it's taking place. We see it. Now is the time. Now is the time for us to take the reins back. And this is why we have to keep on going and why we have to keep teaming up and the crabs in the bucket and all of that stuff. That stuff has been in the past. And if had we known then what that does, we could have been seen more change, but we were trained. It's a psychological thing. We were trained on that plantation seriously to not be anything but less than to where we believed it so much that we wouldn't even read, we would not and smart. We wouldn't even do things that we knew we can do except for go to church on Sunday because they allowed that. And that's how we came together. But we could have been, did this. So happy to see that the fear cycle is starting to break. And the more we even and the more people that come on, guess what happens? Because it's all a conditioning system. Those men target our men today and they targeted them in 1790 as well because they're scared. They're scared of the power. They're scared of the, the resilience. And they're scared that we're relentless, right? They broke people's foot. They cut them feet. I'm sorry. They cut off their feet. And they still ran 
to get to freedom. That is called beyond resilience. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? And so people who want things like that in their nature, in their nature, they, they, they get scared of it. So they have to remove it. You know, instead of saying, wow, these people, this culture is amazing. They know it's amazing. That's why they copy everything, copy our music, they copy our clothing, and then they have the money, the resources, the finances, the push like we think we don't have. But there are small business loans. There are mentors that will help you. There are things out there, you guys, especially I, I don't like to hear people say, oh, I want to go back to school, but it's so I, I can't get a loan. Yes, you can. There's grants, there's loans, there's Obama opened up for moms, single moms to go. I use that grant to go back to school for master programs. There are things out there. Get up. Don't be afraid anymore and advocate for you. It's your life. And it's the life of who's coming after you. More importantly, you have children, you have nieces, you have nephews. This is the time. Get yourself together. I keep saying turnkey. You no, know, we like a house. When we shopping in real estate, we want it to be turnkey. What's your turnkey when COVID lets up the best way that it's going to left up? When you leave up, when you open up the door, what have you done while you were down all this time? Don't talk about it. Do it. That's all I have to say. Well, here's the thing that's going to be more important. Here's the thing that's going to be more important. I just want to say this. With everything that we're talking and for anybody out there listening, it still comes back to this. Results. And when I say about results, you know, people are not playing, people are protesting. I want to see results. And when I say about results, when, you know, whether it's 2020, but in 2021, for sure, I want to see that the league's done, gave some of the, the businesses to minority owners. You know what I want to say? I want to see that they done included my minority owners, you know, not just throwing money to just shut people up. I want to see the meter that what what did that money go to towards? What did it help? You know what I'm saying? And this is why I tell people don't be fooled just because someone's. I mean, how many times? And I'm not talking about the league. I'm just using it. How many times people say, "Oh, I gave money to that," but they really didn't. They really didn't. I want to see results. Like I said, everybody's always talking and they say they're doing it and it's moving. No, I want to see the needle move when minorities can say, "Hey, you know what? I'm invested in the league. They bought me this business." And I'm talking about any. I'm talking about any of the sports. You know. Because that's that's true progress, you know what I'm saying? Results, and we need to see results. And this is why I tell people, even when we rise up out of COVID and all this stuff, no, we want to be able to see on paper what happened, what was the result of everything that's being done right now? What came out of it? Where are the results? They need to be measured results. Yeah, absolutely. Measuring results. I can't agree with you more. And I got to prompt in my guy, Ruff, and also, uh, you know, Tamika, too, you quiet back there. So um, let me read you a little something from, um, from Jalen Brown, okay? And this is really the reason why I feel like all of this walkout happened in the first place. And... Um, and I know it's, it has to do with a lot of players' hesitation. Now, we had the lockout in 2011, right, Ruff? Yep. And um, Jalen was saying part of the hesitation to support the owners of the teams is because, you know, they or already they go far with, uh, you know, with the other three-part initiative that they had when they had their lockdown, you know. So these are the reasons why the players are so frontal because, here it is 2020. We had a lockdown in 2011 because of issues that we just didn't feel like uh, we, we were at gridlock at. You know, a part of those problems were that were, were, were racially directed, you know, and it had to do with coaches not getting hired. We, we go from, 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 from phase to phase to phase. And then people wonder why players are so disgruntled. It doesn't matter how much money you're being paid. You know, if you're not happy and you don't see results, then there's going to be a problem. What do you think about that? Well, absolutely. I mean, absolutely that's the case. I mean, these young fellas are, are, are black people too. They're just not, 
you know, rich black people, no one wants to see injustice for the sake of injustice, right? No one wants to see, you know, coaches not get hired, GMs not get hired, VPs not get hired, right? So all of these things lead to mistrust. You know, when they see the actions of, of these people, like why, why did, um, you know, you look at um, the coach of Indiana Pacers, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, McMillan, Nate McMillan, what is he getting fired for? He's He's been there four he years. Been the, he just got fired. They've been to the playoff four years in a row. He's, his second best player is hurt. The ball, his all-stars hurt, it's a bonus. I mean, you know, so when they see things like that, they want to know, you know, what, you know, how can we trust you in anything? But again, it goes back to economics. If you own a few more teams and you got a few more seats at the table, then you can, you can make change at that, at the level you need to make change at. I mean, you're never going to tell me what to do with my company, Adrian. It's my company, right? It's my business. Absolutely. You know, you feel how you feel, fair or unfair, it's mine. And so you can always go work somewhere else, right? But when you are my peer and sit on the same level as I do, and you go, you know what, Ruff? You know, the way you treat people is really not right. You know, you need to really take a look at that. You respect it more owner to owner, business owner to business owner, right? As as opposed to an employee trying to tell you how to run your business. So you got to get more more seats at the table at that level, you know, and then you you know then you're then the respect to come change will come etc. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, just to elaborate on it more, you know, um, I know that a lot of people were, you know, uh, aggravated with LeBron. Either you like the kid or you don't. You know, it's one or the other. There's no straddle the fence with the guy. You know, on one hand he's just slaying. And then on the other hand, you know, he's still young. He may he may make suspect decisions in regards to telling everybody, hey, let's just all walk out. That that just be the easiest thing to walk away. That's always that's always the easiest solution. But on the other side, you get this guy. He starts a, a multi million dollar fund, um, and uh, it's not just him. It's a, a couple of other players. And on the female side of it, you know, I heard uh, Skylar Diggs' name be bounced around for this. So. Basically, what they what they're doing is that the initiation is that they want every arena that the that the NBA owns to uh, to to be open and available in access to be able to have people of color, disadvantaged people, uh, come and vote. So they want to set up you know voting stations to make sure that you know if there's any corruption going on within the polls that we have some degree of control over that you know, across the globe where people can go and vote. So how many teams we got in the league, Ruff? 30, 30 33. 30, 32, 30. Okay, 30. so if you have, let's just throw the magic, that magic number out there, whatever it may be, not right off the top of my head. I'm on, I don't know why I keep pushing 36, but, um, you know, there's 36 places across the across the country that you can go and you can vote and be safe to vote. So, I mean, on, on, on one hand, you know, people are getting aggravated with him, but on the other hand, he's doing magnificent things alongside other players that are doing magnificent things. It's not just him involved in this. So elaborate on that a little bit. How, how does that make you feel a little bit, me, to know that we're trying to set up some things and trying to do some things, real, really do some things and not just talk to talk, and walk the walk. Whether you agree or disagree with the with the stance that LeBron has taken, you gotta you, you gotta look at this guy and say he's doing everything he could possibly do with his platform to use it to to further the what what what's important to all of us. Um, so yeah, like you said, maybe, maybe he didn't maybe he didn't do one or two things the correct way. But this guy, man, you cannot you cannot say that he hasn't done everything to, in his in his power to use his platform to to further along um, anything that we as black people could do. You know, he's he's done it. You know, from from the school, from starting his own school, from using his own money, from you know, every time he he steps up and says something, it, he's saying something to further you know further the the goals 
and 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 what we want to accomplish. So, I mean, I, I you know, the, the the guy is doing an incredible job. Um, not just him, you know, athletes all over the world just using their platform to do it. But I mean, since we're talking about LeBron, you know, I'm I'm mentioning him, but. I can't I can't say enough good things about him. If he said one or two bad things or did didn't do something the right way on one or two things, I mean we we can all look at that and ignore that because he's doing so much good for us all. You hope he's probably, he's probably hope. the most yeah. popular dude yeah. across the country, across the globe, and and to take the leadership positions that he takes on very controversial topics is you know. It's great for a young fella. I mean, and he does it unapologetically. He doesn't care, and he does it. He brings a he brings a team with him. I don't. It's tough not to like this young fella. It really is. I mean, in my opinion, it's and see, and it goes and it goes back to what I'm looking at, and it's going to be interesting. Like you say, when you black, they try to pick out that one little thing that you did that somebody don't like to try to tear you down because the reality of it is, is this right here. You can please some of the people all the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Let me tell you something. It's hot right now and it's only going to get hotter. And people on the outside know who's leading the charge. So get ready because LeBron's about to take a couple of hits because they figure if they can knock LeBron out or discredit LeBron or make him look like the bad guy or turn some of the young players against them, then here we go again, back to what Vic said, divide and conquer. You know, that's the that's the easy solution when you're trying to defeat something that's moving, divide and conquer. And this is why when I saw oh, some of the young guys didn't like the way LeBron talked to them where, you know, when there's a bigger issue going on sometimes, no, somebody don't have time to say, oh, excuse me, uh, uh, you know. No. no, he's just saying exactly what he, what he feels and, that's how you should be able to take the message versus how it's being said. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to get it right all the time because everybody has emotion. And what I said about LeBron, that's why when I woke up and I read those articles and Adrian, some of the articles that you sent, how people are taking a shot at LeBron because they know he's a leader. Yeah. And they know if they can discredit the leader, they break the pack. And this is why I'm telling people now, don't be fooled. You know, don't be fooled, fooled by the sauce. Or, you know what they say, don't sweat the small stuff. Because when you start sweating the small stuff, you're going to lose. And that's why I say, this ain't going to be the first time they're going to try to discredit LeBron. They know the head of the horse. They ain't trying to shoot the body. They're trying to shoot the head. You know, and that's why I tell people, don't feed into that. Or just because he may want to do something you don't want to do, that's where that communication, you have to stay communicating. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like something... And I say this to everybody, don't take it outside. If you didn't like it, go tell LeBron. I'm sure he'll listen to you. Be a man or be a woman or or be the, the mature person that he is trying to stand up for everybody and go have a conversation with him because that's when the communication is lost. You know, when people don't want to communicate and people want to be different, people want to challenge the leader. No, they can only be one Batman. They want Batman and Batman 2. There's one Batman. LeBron's Batman. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I say, and if you got a problem, go have a conversation. But don't, don't, you know, that's why when I was reading, I was, I'm not surprised because I understand it. I understand it. Mm -hmm. This spread of the hood, this spread of the horse, take shots at him. If you can, shake it up, turn everybody against each other. Because like Vic said, if you turn everybody against each other, you got chaos, nothing gets solved. But if you can stay united, and like I say, you ain't going to please all the people all the time. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you got to eat some stuff. So just eat it and keep moving. And that's, that's sorry to jump in, but yeah. just to piggyback no, and bring certain it. things around, that's one thing I get mad. I know Adrian probably seen a post that I did maybe a week or two ago about how we tear each other down. Yep. You know, we have to stop doing that also, no matter who it is. If we don't like it, uh, someone's view or whatever, like you said, Penny, keep it in house. No other culture does that. You know what I mean? And, you know, just going a little bit further, um, when we talk about economics and history, the Jews, the Asians, 
you know, um, even on, white people, they have, they teach, okay, we go to school, we learn the white man's history, right? But when they come home, they learn their history. We have to start teaching our history, economics, showing that we are, not were, kings and queens, that we yes. built this nation and other nations that algebra started in Africa. That's why I like um, Nas's new album. I'm a Nas fan, but he, he, he preaches about that. He talks about Excellent. how algebra came out of the dumbest part of Africa, right? And how that, oh, well, Michael Jordan gives back just as LeBron James, but Michael Jordan does it quietly. You know what I mean? Like we throw shots at each other for not doing something the way we see fit. And then as Penny said, men's is a goal where, and I always preach this, you cannot understand something unless you've been through it. I will never know how it is or understand how it is to be a woman. A white person would never understand how it is to be black and vice versa, you know, cause we don't have the same experience, but we can talk and see why we are how we are, you know what I mean? And it, we won't really fully understand that person's experience, but you will understand or not understand, but see why this person's action are like it is, you know what I mean? Like somebody that never been touched, like given affection when they were kids, when they usually, when they're adults, they either do two things, either they seek affection or someone like me, not saying my mom and dad didn't give me affection, but I don't like being touched. You know what I mean? It's a reason for all that. You see what I'm saying? But um, talking helps, it helps us um, see why someone may feel, act a certain way. So, you know, um, but I'll close it in by saying we need to stop cutting each other off, keep it inside and just talk, you know, and understand it's okay to agree to disagree as long as we're able to communicate. We can walk away from the table um, not being in total agreement, but you said your point, I listen. That's the key thing, listen. Not heard what you were saying, waiting to, for you to finish so you can, so I can jump in, but I listen to it and I process it and you do the same. And I think that's when, of course, with other actions that we as a community and as well as a world will become better. And I think that that's what the WNBA and the NBA did and is doing. They actually sat down and heard these things out, you know, and of course, like Penny said, we all know you're not going to agree with someone all the time. It's just not going to be like that. And people are not going to like you all the time, but we need to teach our history, economics, saving money, that we're kings and queens, beautiful mm. people. Mm. And that being that we are queens and que kings and queens, and our fellow man or king, queen, uh, excuse me, king and queens, and we show respect, and that it's okay to not like their message or whatever, but we don't have to cut them down because it's not going to, it's, it's only holding us back. And no one's really, when you do that, they're not taking us serious. That's the old Willie Lynch syndrome. Willie Lynch, his letter, talked about it, pitting us against each other, male and female, lighter skin against darker skin, educated, uneducated, have and have not. And we're just repeating the cycle over and over again. And it's sad that we're talking about LeBron um, getting black backlash for the things he's, he's doing and has done you know, it it infuriates me when we could even compare him to Kobe or him to Michael Jordan. 
you know what I mean, as a great, and meant not in a comparison of they're great, but then we will tear one down in order to make our point. That's foolishness. You know what I mean? No other culture does that. So I'll just, you know, shut up on that note. Insanity, but. insanity. And you yeah. know, I'm proud of you, brother. I'm proud of you, brother. What the, you know, um, you, this young man right here came a long way. And that's all I'm going to say about my little nephew right there from Old Dominion University. We go way back like six pack. Um, Adrian, let me throw this is, in there. Um, just real quick while we on it, like what Vic saying, what and, and Vic, I agree with you 100%. You articulated that very, very well. And just to put the, the final button on that, that I think people uh, don't understand that America is the greatest country. And what we have to understand is that there's more than enough for everybody versus they try to feed us that if I have it, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? Like what you're saying. But what we have to get to as a race in the country is that there's enough in America for everybody. And that's the that's that's basically the point you're trying to we don't have to tear anybody down, we don't have to rise anybody any higher. That's what's great about our country and that's the message that's lost. That, you know, we can help each other and guess what? There's still gonna be plenty more left because this is a great country. There's more than enough, but people have to really buy into that, believe that, and understand. And look, I don't go to church, but why do you think the Bible even say it's it's better to give than to to than to receive? Because there's more than enough that you're gonna get your share. You know what I'm saying? And my friends probably, if they're watching, they'll be like, "This girl ain't been to church and gone to window. I haven't." But I I understand that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I understand that, that, you know, because I know there's more than enough. And that's why I say you get joy when you give. You're happy when you give. And it's true, you know, and I know that, at least for me. And that's what, what you said was so perfectly and and so articulated. I mean, it was it was it was great. But like what it and just to put the button on it. For everybody out there, it's more than enough for all of us. And even if all of us are eating the same food from the table, guess what? That's more where that more it's more where that came from. And that's what people don't understand. I just wanted to add to that real quick, Adrian. Um, going back to that with Vic said, I definitely co-sign everything as well. And it for him to tell on the other slaves, to tell what they were doing, tattletaling you know, pulling each other down because they got a reward. So once again, it's that psychological component that we were No Wi-Fi in South Dakota. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to start on time. <laughs> we train. No Wi-Fi in South Dakota. No Wi-Fi is off. Wow, yeah, you broke up. Okay. Don't get frozen. Point, you know my, how they do. My point was. My point was. <laughs> Penny already that, started in. Penny already started. That wasn't me. That was rough. <laughs> okay. Is it on now? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can hear you now. Yeah. I'm not. Go on again. <laughs> Penny, I, I, hey, Penny, I'm a little upset being the church going guy every Sunday that you know. <laughs> You know what? You know what I say, Ralph? I believe this, and, and, and I'm sure I'm gonna give me a million followers after this. I always believe, and trust me, when I was growing up, grew up in a Baptist family. I think I must have went to church three times a week: Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I'm going to get those three days in. But I, over time, I just learned it's you know I believe in a higher power, I believe in God, but my church is wherever I'm at. I don't go to church, Pity. I'm just messing. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. My church is wherever I'm at. Yeah, I had to bite my, my tongue. Right here. I'm, 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 I'm surprised you bit your tongue, Adrian. I'm Listen, surprised. That you know, sometimes I gotta just let my I gotta let I gotta let my big brother do what he does. You know what I'm saying? And I crack him in the back, in the back room. You know, I don't do it out front. You know, I call you and be like, "Why are you lie and tell that girl you go to church? You know you ain't going to church." Church has shoes. So, 
Bottom line is this. <laughs> you crazy. <ain't> you? <laughs> <laughs> you got Google Podcast downloaded. You got Anchor FM downloaded. Overcast downloaded. Pocket Cast downloaded. Radio Public downloaded. Breaker downloaded. Google, did I say Google Podcast? Download it. Apple, download it. Castro, down. Somebody stop me. <laughs> Bottom line is, I love all of you. Tara Lynn Towns, Tamika Dixon, Penny Tola, Minus Eric Williams, Ernest Ruffin Jr., Mid <laughs> Lamont Bunch Jr. Had two juniors on the show today. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> many more, many more. <laughs> yes. You guys know I love you. I love, love you, you too, the light. Andrew. Tammy Sosa in the house. To all of my people love out y'all. there, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting oh us. God. Wish y'all had to ask some questions today. Have a good week. See you. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Nice seeing you, Vin and Ruffin. Good week. See good you, week. Have a good week. To make your tower. <laughs> Peace.